this woman, I think, hates me. I'm trying to remember. There's so much of this. She wrote a poem. She hates me so much. I thought that I would never see a nose as big as a tree. Then I saw Howard Stern, who's as gay as a fern. I wish I wish upon a star that I could see just how far your nose extends out into space off your ugly, heinous face. And shut up, Artie Lang, you big beast, the beast from Bayonne. <laughs> it just ended with a little oh, Artie. Song. Yeah. I you no, know, Artie was laughing. She goes, shut up, Artie. I caught a little shrapnel. <laughs> Someone told me that's Maya Angelou, but I don't believe it. Then I think she called back again. A nose is a nose until it grows. Then it's as big as a water hose. Just like Pinocchio. Pinocchio, how it's done. So go to the nose and hear his woes with his broken thumb and his beautiful toes. You're right, beautiful toes. This ugly guy has got to be high, that coon face Howard Stern, the ugliest guy in the world. Boop, boop. I like the boop, boop. Yeah. The production. Yeah. I wonder I have a bad self-image. Uh, yeah, people aren't helping. Mm. Yeah. All right, a couple of quick uh, voicemails have come in. I haven't even heard these yet. I don't know if they're bad about me, you, or whatever. This is from uh, that hate lady. She finally started oh, calling again. Boy. Howard, I saw that latest picture of you and Beth in the newspaper uh -oh. walking to a supermarket. It looks like a picture of a young girl standing next to a big giant Pez dispenser in Disney World. You are so ugly. You're a freak of nature. Wow. The Pez dispenser now is a new one. She's back. She writes me these vicious hate letters. She thinks I don't know it's her, but they're awful. Howard, I saw your Easter last night, and you were wearing a white tank, tank top. And when you have arms and shoulders that look like Q-tips, you're not supposed to wear open tank tops that show your body. You should wear something with padding to cover up your body, or wear a big coat and cover up that neck of yours. Your neck, I never saw anybody with such an ugly neck in my life. You have such a long, tall neck. It looks like a leg. Just cover yourself up. Wow. So there it is. It was actually my mother. <laughs> uh, where did she go? Has she been away somewhere? You never get to talk back to her. She only calls in on voicemail. Yeah. She probably went away to a fat farm or something. Mm. <laughs> you know she never gets laid. You know that woman who hates me, the one who thinks oh, I'm the yeah. ugliest guy in the world? Um, uh, she, she, uh, she calls a hundred times a day, even has Casey's home phone number. Oh, no. Which I said, how did she get your number, Casey? He he goes, I I don't know. I go, what are you listed? Or something? He goes, No, I'm not listed. Because I, I told him I don't want to be. I go, You probably are or something. I don't know what you're doing. He probably gave it to her. You know, Howard, I didn't think anything could be uglier than what you look like from the front view. But then I was watching you interview that Summer Altice girl when you were standing next to her. Oh, my God, you're a hunchback. I never knew it before when you were standing up next to her. You get the whole view of your whole body. Your, your whole back and your shoulders are hunched over. Oh, my God, you look like you were going to topple over. You're a hunchback. I can't believe it. Oh, this woman is oh, that's great. I think she was concerned. I saw you on the E show, Summer Baptiste. And you were, you were hunch, oh my god, you were hunchback. Oh my god, I never thought anything could be uglier than you from the front view. <laughs> All excited. Called 50 times a day to tell me how ugly I am. Okay, here we go. Voicemail. You ready? Okay, this is uh, a woman who hates. Jeez, I don't even remember. Oh, she has a question about the newlywed game. I think that's what it was. I should know what the hell this is, but I, I forget. I listened to these so long ago. How would you old buzzard? Yeah, it's the woman who hates me. She really... You know that voice as soon as you hear. Why don't you ask some real questions on that newlywed show, like, Beth, when you look at Howard, which of the following things do you see? A, a Swiss bank account, B, a wallet full of gold and platinum credit cards, or C, a big cash register? Excuse me, register. I know how fussy you are, you little fuss budget. <laughs> she, uh... She listens to your responses. Yes. You know, I, I have to play you some of the voicemail from yesterday because it was so particularly vicious. 99% of our voicemail... And I'm ripping out the voicemail as a result of this. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I, it's it always... that bad? Yeah, it's always bad. No one ever calls with anything good. Yeah. 
Um, it's over, Jenny. I'm listening to it. The first call was from that woman who hates me, who calls. She loves that voicemail because she can't get through on the regular show, and she's afraid to call me on the regular show. But on the voicemail, she's she's all full of fire. Got free reign. She started ridiculing how I looked during the Losers versus Corey Feldman E show. Uh. Then the rest of the callers piled on about how what a baby I am because no one would sit with me at Fred's birthday party. I mean, but listen to this. No, I was watching you on your East show with Corey Feldman. You, I never saw a person that looked so pointy like you, with a big pointy nose and a pointy chin and a pointy Adam's apple. You look like one of those big pointing sticks. I swear to God, I never saw anybody like you before. Go to the spirit in the sky already. Maybe he can do something for you. She hates me. Jesus. And uh, I can't. I would love to see what she looks like. She'll never show up. Never show up. No balls. But then everyone, including her, piled on about Fred's birthday party, how no one would sit with me. Howard, what Angie Everhart said about you being the best date she ever had is like when a guy says about a girl he once went out with, oh, she was such a lovely young lady. That's what she meant. You do not have sex appeal. You are not a hunk. You are not a stud. You never will be. You are ugly. You are a whining cry baby. You have a personality like a gentle woman. You just don't have what it takes to be a sex symbol. Face it already. Yeah, this woman, uh, I, I forgot about that call. She she can't, oh, wait. She can't handle the fact that someone has something nice to say about oh, me. Oh, poor you. She's not going to be hot for you. Yeah, well, gee, I'll kill myself. <laughs> what are the chances that woman doesn't have a beard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you know she's fat and has facial hair. Oh, my God. There's it's no way. It's going to hurt you that she doesn't like There's no way she's good looking like Marianne from Brooklyn, which surprises you with that voice. You know what I mean? Oh, you disgust me. Oh, she should have. You, you, you're, you're long scratch. Oh, my God. I saw a picture of you. You look like a scarecrow. Poor Beth. I saw you in Central Park with your poor girlfriend. It looked like she was walking her pet pelican. <laughs> <laughs> you with your big hair and your big pointy nose. I feel so sorry for her and her family. Oh, Howard, I never saw you stand. You're stupid. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe you're it. You're so stupid. Over, you poor thing. I felt so bad for you. As much as I hate you, I felt bad for you. I couldn't even watch anymore. I think she actually gave us a voicemail the other day. Let me see if this is, uh... This is roasting. Yeah. Let me I, see if I can find... Then she comes in. She probably looks like the snow miser. <laughs> I think this might be her. Wait, may, let me just see. This would be an excellent example, but... Is it is it track two? Yeah, me too. All right. Here, wait, I think this is her. She could just win with this. You know, Howard, you should have your first name legally changed to Jealous. His name should legally be Jealous Stern, because you're so jealous of Tom Chiasano, because he's a handsome, good-looking, attractive man, and you are not. And your jealousy just shines through like an ugly old witch. <laughs> she, she didn't get revved up. She didn't up. get uh, into yeah. it. Yeah. All right, here's that woman. You know, I saw you. You're disgusting. She was ragging on Artie, and then, of course, she gets me involved. Of course. I want to tell you something, Artie Lang. You are so big and round, and when you stand next to Howard, who we all know is so long and pointy, the two of you look like two geometric shapes. You don't look like human beings. I never saw people that look like you two. You shouldn't go outside unless you have big tablecloths or big sheets covering the, yourselves. You are the ugliest two people who ever lived. And your face, you have such a disheveled, peculiar-looking face. You look like that nut who Shirley Carter, Shirley Jones, whatever her name is, married to. You nut job. Mm. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if she was like 23 years old and really hot? Oh, yeah. But is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. I saw you. I saw you. How it's so pointy. I... And you, you, you look like Shirley Partridge. Oh, my God. It looks like... Shape. You stand next to each other. It looks like the number 10. <laughs> so geometric shape. I saw you getting your prostate checked by Dr. Bob. <laughs> Dr. Bob has such a good technique when he's working on pelicans. You have a disheveled face. <laughs> disheveled. So I'm very rude. And then that hate woman, the woman who hates me and says I look disgusting. I so saw you, you woman. woman. Yeah, now she's uh, she's on a tear yesterday. She she did like three in a row. Howard, I saw that picture of you running in Central Park in this week's Globe magazine. I see you shaving your legs now, Howard. You're supposed to try and look like... No, I don't shave my legs. You don't. Okay. Shave my legs. 
Jesus H. Christ. I've never yeah. shaved my goddamn legs. He waxes. There's yeah. a difference. Ethel Crow, not Cheryl Crow, you big scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then she called back because she forgot to say something. And I also saw that big blown-up picture of your face next to Beth's face in the Star magazine this weekend. You know, you used to look like Barbara Streisand. Now you've morphed into Leona Helmsley. It's a pity. It's just what to say, what to say. It's a pitiful pity. What to say, what to say. <laughs> Old hag. <laughs> yeah, we, let's you get it. Yeah, let's see your picture. Uh, then finally this. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. My birthday. My birthday. Two weeks later and I still have to talk about it. Oh, my birthday. Robin made a party and took me here. And my parents took me here. And Beth took me here. And Gary and Fred bought me this. And Bon Jovi had to call me on the phone. And Jay Leno has to call me on the phone. And everybody, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. My birthday. My birthday. You know, I picture you sitting in a big diaper. And when you bend over to blow out your candles on your birthday cake, your nose catches on fire. Fire. <laughs> Bitter, ugly woman jealous of my life. Or eerie warning. You never know. I mean, maybe uh, maybe she was worried about you. Well, um, who knows? Let's I go... can't believe she never entered that contest. Yeah, well, because she's afraid to come down here and let us look at her. Yeah. Which, Robert, you're on the air. Yeah, I can listen to her talk all day. Alex. Me too. Great. The smell. <laughs> I love to smell myself. Good Lord, I'm going to put you in a cage. I'm in love with me and my odors. Oh, Jesus, I was in bed with Beth last night, and I ripped one. I've been sick, you know, and I've been eating a lot to try to get rid of my cold. You know, that's what I do. Mm. I think somehow if I eat more, I'll get rid of it. And you're eating late, probably. And also it soothes my throat and everything, so yeah. I'm laying in there, and I just had a rip one. I just said, you know what, I'll leave the covers down. And then I ripped it, and I forgot that I ripped it, oh. and she was like, what did you do? It's like something died. It's like... I saw you. <laughs> I saw you farting next to Beth. Hey, by the way, the I saw you lady already called. Uh, yeah. I played it yesterday. She yeah, she was great. She three, was here. Three voicemails in a row. You didn't get to hear it. Oh, damn. She was good. I want her to put out an album. Yeah, wait. I'll play them for you. Really? Let's see if I can find them. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I missed you while he was playing them. Oh. Because you couldn't uh, participate. Oh, here's the I saw you lady. <laughs> Howard, I saw that picture of you running in Central Park in this week's Globe magazine. I see you're shaving your legs now, Howard. You're supposed to try and look like Russell Crow, not Cheryl Crow, you big scarecrow. <laughs> For the record, though, I don't shave my legs. Yeah. Another person reporting on you falsely. Yeah. I notice you're shaving your legs now, Howard. Oh, my God. I did notice in the paper that my legs looked very much void of hair, but I got a lot of hair on my legs. Yeah, you have hairy legs. What happened? I don't know. Just didn't. I guess it didn't pick up the hair when their telephoto lenses they were spying on me. <laughs> did the laser miss it completely bare and get your legs by mistake? I'm on my third treatment at completely bare. Oh, that's nice. For my shoulders and arms. Did you just go, or you have an upcoming appointment? I've got one coming up this weekend. I see. I'm going to go over there, see how good they are. He's at the spa. Marty, they see you. They're gonna, you're gonna get scared. <laughs> I'm thinking about heading over there though. Why don't we just to uh, call in a special team? Yeah, why don't we just walk in with a bear? <laughs> hey, can you get remove the hair off this thing? Uh, then she called back. Howard, I saw that picture of you running in Central Park. And oh, that's, that's the same one. one. Where's the second one? Oh. I'm advancing for some reason. Here we go. And I also saw that big blown-up picture of your face next to Beth's face in the Star magazine this weekend. You know, you used to look like Barbara Streisand. Now you've morphed into Leona Helmsley. It's a pity. It's just what to say, what to say. It's a pitiful pity. Right. <laughs> Jesus. And one more time. I saw that. I saw that picture of you. You used to look like Barbara Streisand. What to say, what to say. You've morphed. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. My birthday. My birthday. Two weeks later, and I still have to talk about it. Oh, my birthday. Robin made a party and took me here, and my parents took me here, and Beth took me here, and Gary and Fred bought me this, and Bon Jovi had to call me on the phone, and Jay Leno had to call me on the phone, and everybody, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. My birthday. My birthday. You know, I picture you sitting in a big diaper, and when you bend over to blow out your candles on your birthday cake, your nose catches on fire. Fire. I saw you breathing in and out. Fire. Fire. I saw you doing nothing. I saw you. 
I would love to strangle her. <laughs> yeah. She's like every annoying woman. And you know she's lonely and old. Oh, oh you're her best friend. Thank mm -hmm. God for you. She looks like Danny DeVito in Batman Returns. <laughs> she, looks, she looks like the penguin. I saw you dialing two and two. Yeah, I saw you with the new area code. <laughs> I just saw that new picture of you and Beth in the newspaper when you were at that party in the Hamptons, the magazine club that she was on. I want to tell you something. You are not fooling anybody with those tricks you play in front of the camera with your face. You're very, very ugly. You can't hide it with tricks. I see what you do. You bite down on your lip to make it look like you have a strong jawline and a chin line and bone structure. And you keep your head down so the camera doesn't get the full view of your nose. And you comb all your hair covering the sides of your face so only a tiny bit of your face shows just a little bit in the front you know how to hold your face so so your nose isn't doesn't look as big as it really is but you're not fooling anybody the whole country knows how ugly you are you can't fool people with trick photography or trick facial expressions when you're in front of the camera you will always be the ugliest man in the world and there's nothing you could do about it nothing 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 you ugly man Wow. All right. Well, let me say something. I take that as a compliment. I was uh, going to say, that's a new one. She calls especially after the vacation. I was not involved with any trick photography. I was at an event, and uh, someone snapped pictures of me from all over. And... No, she's not saying there's trick photography. She's saying you do tricks by yeah. biting your lip or something. Well, yeah. and I, I don't recall that. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody with your tricks. I think what she's saying is the picture must have looked nice. Yes. Yeah, and she feels she... I did tricks. Right. She knows that you're not that good looking. No. Because she apparently she liked this picture. Well, she's right. One good picture doesn't mean I'm good looking. There are many bad angles. I, she's you're absolutely not fooling right. anybody. I saw you, lady, is back. Oh, boy. I saw you. Uh oh. New message from her. Happy New Year. Howard, I saw you on the old David Gutterman rerun yesterday on the Trio station, and the nose you had on that show from the 1980s is not the same nose you have now. The nose you have now looks like a cute little button nose compared to that big hook you had back then. Now, what's going on with you? How many different noses do you have? Or were you holding out and you didn't tell anybody you had worked on on that big schnoz of yours? Now, you can't tell anybody that that's the same nose. That nose was so big, it was sticking out into David Letterman's part. Howard, that hunker that you had on that old Letterman show is not the nose that you have now. Now, this nose was so big, it was sticking all the way out over to David Letterman's side of the screen. It was like a big beak coming off your face and pointing into his face. Now, you did something that's not the same nose that's on your e-show. It makes your nose you have now look like a cute little pug nose. And the nose you have now is gigantic. Oh, my God. The nose I have now is gigantic. And the fact of the matter is, the reason it looks different on Letterman, which I've explained a million times, is that I keep the camera so far back on the e-show, and I only shoot from the right-hand side. You're going to answer her. No. <laughs> I've got to. <laughs> that honka. Howard, I saw you on the Trio channel. Like, she has enough time to be watching the Trio. She's finding you no matter where you are. Hey, did you watch Joe Millionaire? I haven't seen the whole show. It was on late, so I went to sleep. I went to sleep, too. I taped it, but uh, there's a lot of people talking about it. I think it's great. They scammed all these now, broads. is it a whole thing, or is it going to run for several weeks, or was it just one show? I don't know. I didn't see you. <laughs> I saw you with Joe Mill. Let's see. Uh, here's a bunch of uh, voicemail, most of it about how disgusting I am. Let's see what we got here. You want to hear voicemail? Sure. And then I'll get to some listeners, and we'll get to the woman who wants to get naked. I mean, we've got a big agenda today. <laughs> That's not it. Hold on a second. I'm messing up. Please forgive my incompetence as a host to your radio show. Thank you. Howard, I bet you anything that that Shauna Robinson from Access Hollywood, who you met on the plane, was lying to you when she told you that she was very religious and that she doesn't drink or she doesn't go out of anything. She probably very innocently asked you if you knew of any restaurants in Manhattan, and you got all carried away, and she saw that you wanted to go out with her and you were interested in her. And she says, oh, my God, what did I do? I'm not going out with this guy that looks like Barbara Streisand. Well, there it is, uh, the first voicemail of the morning. <sighs> and, and just for the record, she gave me her number and said um, uh, she would love if uh, I would tell her some good restaurants to go to. Don't argue with uh, right. me. Uh, you know I have a fragile ego. <laughs> Marcus.
Howard, I just saw your face on the cover of the Sunday paper. You know, with a face like that, you should forget about a gun. You should be carrying around a cannon. What a face. Yowza. Wow. It's so evil. <laughs> Yowza. Yowza. Checking in at 725, the most annoying woman in the world. Yowza. Look who returned hate woman. Oh. Howard, I just saw a new picture of you in the newspaper. You have Joel Steinberg's face and Mary Kate Olsen's body. I want to know when Beth is going to take a lie detector test. How does she touch you? You are so ugly and so gross. Ew, ew, ew. You have an ana a teenage anorexic girl's body. Ew, ew, ew. With a witch's face. Ew. <laughs> Where has she been? I don't know, man. But she sent a new picture of me to drag her out of the hole she lived. Yeah, I was worried about her. Yeah, yeah. I think she's. I think that there's times where the government detains her. <laughs> you can't believe Robin's going out with a 50 year old? What do you think your girlfriend's going out with? You are a very sick. You better change psychiatrist. There's something wrong with you. You're an old man. You talk like a 14 year old who was never around people who were over, over high school age, you big idiot. That's what I was going to say. No, you weren't. I was. <laughs> you were not going to say No, because you 